Welcome to Business and Finance here on Echo Television International. I am Rachel Tanzi. And the new inflation rate for the month of February is out. And we are seeing inflation rate hitting a new high of over 31.70%. That is high. And this is the total headline inflation comprises of food inflation, uh, comprises of housing, comprises of um, 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 health, um, education, and also when it comes to um, oil and every other thing, including what the Naira is as against the dollar as it is now. We are still seeing that there perhaps might not be a free fall compared to how high we saw the dollar going to almost 2,000 Naira to a dollar. But now we are seeing that it's still at a very high side where we are seeing it at over 1,600 Naira to a dollar. There is um, um, speculations that it could go higher up to 1,700, but then eventually we'll be able to find a stable point. But we are still seeing that the Naira as against the dollar is still very high. Now we all know that these factors, including subsidy, fuel subsidy removal, are the reason we are having this much inflation. And that of January we saw, and there's so much, there's just a high um there's a surge is is really very high compared to what we had for january and now what we are having for february now we will look at how it has been month on month year on year and then how many percentage so far now these are reports from the bureau of statistics now saying that year on year we are seeing a 1.8 percentage point of um, 3 uh, 31.7% February 2024 and now uh, as of January we are looking at 29.9% that is for January now the bear disclosed that the consumer price index report for February 2022 noting that food inflation also increased to 37.92% during the period from 35.41% in January. So we are seeing that um, food inflation precisely is the reason we are having um, headline inflation going really high because um, the, the gap is much from 35, we are seeing it now at 37%. Now, in February, the headline inflation rate increased to 31%, and then we are seeing January diff, um, relatively low, 29.9%. Now, if we're looking at this movement, we are seeing that the headline inflation is in, has increased by 1.8%. Now, on a year-on-year basis, headline inflation rate was 9.79%. Um, higher compared to the rate recorded in February 2023, which was 21.91%. So from February 2023 to February 9, 2024, we are seeing a 9.79% po uh, point gap, which is high. Now, increased in the month of February 2024 when compared to the same month in the preceding year. That is the comparison we just saw. Now, furthermore, on a month-on-month -month basis, the headline inflation rate in February 2024 was 3.12%, which was 0.48% higher than the rate recorded in January 2024. That's um, based on um, how it happened from January to February 2023. Um, um, within that period of time, it was just about 3%. And now we are seeing within one month for the year 2024, um, the percentage is different and is very high. Now, this means that in February, the rate of increase in the average price level is more than the rate of increase in the average price level in January. So we are going to keep seeing this search. As we can see, the dollar is not yet, um, the Naira is not yet adding more value as against the, um, the dollar. And then we are seeing that, of course, for subsidy removal is not going anywhere. And fell pound prices are above 700. And we are looking in some part of the country, it's going well above 750, 750 Naira and as high as 800 depending on what part of the country you are. But we are saying that 4 pound price is above 700 Naira. Despite market are saying that there 
is still subsidy removal being paid we are having the nnpcl saying that no way self subsidy is gone and it is gone for good however the landing cost of petroleum is the reason behind this speculation in order to help small medium enterprises we are seeing that um, the united bank of africa have decided to sink in hundred million dollar into businesses now all across africa in the 20 countries that are banking with the uba nigeria is also going to be able to partake from these grants and loan coming from the uba now the loans will be spread across Africa with focus on green finance projects. So I, I believe that the loan is targeted towards um, climate change. So when we hear the word green, green finance is anything that will preserve the ecosystem, anything that will preserve our climate and anything that will be of good to the ecosystem entirely. Now, we are having the UBA Group Managing Director, Oliver, drop the hint during the partnership signing agreement between the bank and the African Guarantee Fund at the bank's um, Lagos head office. Now, the, the, um, this are the statement coming from the Managing Director saying that the facility aligns with our objective to power businesses through this. We will lend to women-led SMEs at cheaper rates. It will demonstrate our commitment to gender equality. We will actively engage government to create loans. It is transformative initiative for fostering economic development. So yes, one of the unique thing about this $100 million is that it is going to be channeled more towards women-owned business in order to be able to create you know, a platform for gender equality even when it comes to business so that women will also thrive in the world of business. Looking that there are, you know, reports out there that it is important for women to be more into business. That's, that it will create some sort of balance in the business world. Now, under the agreement, the AGF that is, um, the AGF that is the um, African Guarantee Fund, will provide 50 million dollar portfolio um, guarantee for the smes and green finance project that will benefit from the facility now the agf will further facilitate extensive capacity building for the borrowers with special focus women lend businesses and green finance projects across the 20 countries where uba operates in africa so um, UBA operates in over 20, um, 20 countries in Africa and then green project. So if you are out there and you are championing the cause for green projects, be it renewable energy, sustainable energy, be it anything that has to do with preserving climate and making sure that the ecosystem is healthy, then these loans will be accessible to your project. And then if you are a woman in business and you have a small medium enterprise, you are guaranteed to have access to these um, loans. And then there's going to be less of, um, interest rate for women to be able to, uh, you know, give a platform for gender equality and also inclusiveness, inclusiveness. I believe this is along with the theme of the International uh, Women's Day, which the theme for the year is inclusiveness. That is to include women in every sector. And that is to give a platform for women to thrive in business. So just be rest assured that as a woman in business, your interest rate for this loan, when you eventually have access to it, is going to be low. It's not going to be at the standard rate, therefore giving you an edge to thrive in business. Now, moving on, we are seeing that um, the World Bank partnering with the World Trade Organization are seeing that, you know what, African countries are going to benefit from a $1 billion digital trade initiative. Now, Nigeria, alongside other countries, are going to benefit from it. And this is as a result of our influential position in the continent. So we are being picked because of our influential, influential position in um, Africa, in the continent entirely. Now, Nigeria has been picked as one of the pilot countries for the w -Trade, uh, World Trade Organization and World Bank Digital Trade Initiative for Africa. The project, with $1 billion funding, seeks to improve digital connectivity 
of the Nigerian economy and regulatory capacity. Now, this was disclosed in Abuja by the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Professor Ngozi okonjo Wela, at the launch of the WTO International Trade Center and Standard Trade Development Facility. Now, the World Trade Organization boss, who also hinted at a global trade regulatory body, was offering $1.2 million to curb Nigeria's products rejection overseas. Yes, that is also a problem that we have a bad market. Obviously, we, we've been seeing a little bit of such hints with what manufacturers are saying and what investors are saying concerning our project, uh, our products rather. Now, we are seeing that um, Ngozi Okonjo Wela is saying that there will be a $1.2 million offer to cut products rejection overseas said the funds was to improve the standard and quality of Nigeria's non-oil exports and minimize rejection by training Nigeria local food safety advisors. Yes, we remember that when um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu went for the G20 summit meeting and was given a chance to talk, he asked for a fair ground for Nigeria to be able to trade. He asked for for equal rights in market to be treated what um, um, as another business counterpart, not subordinate or something like that. And then this is as a result of some of the factors that we face outside where our products are not regarded as much and there's still exploitation in the international market to African countries, West Africa, and of course Nigeria is not excluded. So we are seeing that not only is the digital um, 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 initiative is just to connect us, but also make sure that we are having connection to products that will not be um, rejected. So it's, it's, it's an all-round initiative that of course it's going to boost our market and then take us to the level which we want to be globally or seen and perceived when it comes to what we have to present and consumption because it is important for us to boost non-oil products in the country. Now, based on an assessment of where Nigeria stands with its digital hardware and software infrastructure, the World Bank, in partnership with the, with the WTO, is prepared to assist to develop or upgrade digital soft and hardware infrastructure. The WTO will help build the necessary regulatory framework and capacity. Nigeria is one of nine pilot African countries to which the World Bank has allocated about $1 billion for the pilot project. So it's a good thing that we are listed among the countries that will kickstart this initiative. And then we look forward to seeing that it will be of importance to us and how we are being viewed to the global eyes and the global market, but and specifically for digital content, be it software, digital products rather, be it software or hardware, that we have quality products out there that are not being rejected and even if we have a connection, if what you're offering is not good enough, then your con connection is kind of wasted. But this project is going to make sure that it is a full packet and nothing is left out. There will be connection and then there will be acceptance of our products because they are of standard and quality meeting to world standards. Now, um, we are seeing that the federal government is after two years going back to the eurobond market now these are cross-border deals eurobonds are cross-border deals and a debt instrument where, where you put in and it's being bought and then you settle some of your money or other countries access your bonds and then you know what you are lending either way you are being able to settle your debt or you are being able to access debt and then um, you move, okay? Depending on any currency, most of the times is um, the US dollar, but of course we know that there are other bigger currencies also like the pound sterling and then the euros. Now, Nigeria is poised for a return to the international debt market this year with plans to issue its first euro bond since 2022. Now, the move to issue euro bonds follows recent successful issuance by several other African nations, including Benin Republic, Ivory Coast, that signal renewed investors' appetite for the continent's 
debt. Now, this is as a result of a trigger, seeing that, okay, we have Benin Republic benefiting from it, and then we are also seeing Ivory Coast, and then Nigeria is seeing perhaps now is the right time for us to step into the debt market. Kenya also have seen an amount of success with this euro bond. Now, in fe on February, let's, let's talk about other countries and what has been the return how much out there for them now in, in, uh, in february kenya tapped the international bond market to raise cash and buy back a 10-year euro bond of two billion dollar that matured in june this year now the 1.5 billion dollar bond which will mature in 2031 was oversubscribed four times with a yield of 10.375 percent so you see how it's working now let's see how it has worked for Benin republic now um Benin republic first ever dollar dominated bond a 750 million dollar issue was oversubscribed to the tune of five billion dollar on february 7 as investors slapped up the debt of the small west african nation so that is what we are seeing that Benin republic has been able to get now the bond sale by Benin republic came two weeks after ivory coast raised 2.6 billion dollar at a rate of between 8.5 percent and 8.75 percent in an oversubscribed euro bond auction so we are seeing how much Kenya has been able to raise, Benin Republic is being able to raise, and then uh, um, Ivory Coast. And now if we step in, we will eventually see what we will be able to do concerning our debt and how much we will be able to go about it. Now, recent debt sales in Africa show how investors are snapping up riskier bonds as the pr prospect of interest rate costs in the U.S. takes benchmark yield of their peaks. Now, this is a report from First Bank Weekly Europod, a Eurobound commentary. So, with about three African countries seeing some sort of success so far, I hope that we put in the modalities in place to be able to record such successes also when it comes to our euro bonds. And then we hopefully do the things right um, so that it won't be that when it is Nigeria's time to put in these euro bonds and then be able to raise certain things with over subscription we will not end up on the wrong side and not see as we will not um see such success as kenya Ken, yeah, ivory coast and then Benin republic now lastly on business and finance today we are seeing that there is another market in the past we've seen many many other uh, markets that have potential and now leather industry is coming to the limelight and we are seeing that the director general of the nigerian institute of leather and science technology professor mohammed says nigeria's leather industry raked in the sum of 645 million dollars now this is what it has been able to rake in with what it has and uh, what it has at hand now meaning with more investment with more turnovers with more um funding more can be acquired and this um speculation is that it could have a gain of over 17 billion dollar yearly yes within a period of a year now the director general who said that at the just concluded technology and innovation expo of 2024 added that the leather market has helped to boost the country's gross domestic product now remember where it is important for us to see that we are turning our attention away from oil production and looking at non-oil production products now this is one of it and we believe that the leather market is one the leather industry just like the textile just like other solid minerals just as every other sector that has been lying in waste can wake up and do the needful and help boost the economy we can see how much it has added to the gross domestic product for the year 2023 now the leather sector has undeniably proven to be prolific making significant significant contribution to economic development security gdp high employment wealth generation and infrastructural development the leather industry is about 400 billion dollar globally acknowledged as a driving tool for industrialization especially in the developing world and yes we are a developing world so imagine a market that is worth 400 billion dollar globally 
And if Nigeria can tap into this $400 billion and be a part sharing in the profit and the revenue that could be generated from leather production. At the national level, the leather industry has played a crucial role in the growth of our gross domestic product, recording over $645 million in a recent survey. Now, experts project that the industry could generate $17 billion. And looking at how much this industry has been able to make, over $645, this is a report coming from the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Leather and Science Technology, then we know with much more being put into the leather industry we can be able to see billions and billions of dollars yearly and be able to tap into the world that there is globally in the market of leather production thank you for not going anywhere with me today on business and finance till i come your way next time goodbye